there you go. I yeah, I I was hoping to do a little live countdown thing before we got st started to make myself look professional. Uh -huh. But it didn't happen. I was like, and we're live <laughs> in three, two. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and we're live. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so here we are for episode 48 of the, ca oh. of the captain's lo log. Uh, welcome, everyone. We are glad you are here and joining us. My name is Kyle Springer. Uh, that is Melissa Wilkinson, who is co-hosting with me as usual. Mm, How are hello. you, Melissa? I'm good, Kyle. How have you been this week? It has been a good week. Kind of. Good for the kind most of. part, but I haven't been sleeping very well, which is no, never fun. why not? Who I don't know. That? I it's It's one of those weird things where I'll, like, get home from work and crash. Just, like, completely dead, tired, need mm -hmm. to just stop and restart. Mm -hmm. And so I'll take a short nap. And then I'm up till like four in the morning because of that darn oh. nap no. but, it, but like the nap is absolutely necessary i can't i can't get around it like it, it's it, it either take the nap or load up on more caffeine during the day which is also gonna do the same thing i'll be up until <laughs> until, until like four in the, in the morning so who knows we'll get there one day how was your week it was good. I had a new trainee at work, so I didn't get up to much. I was just training, and then the weather here is weird. It's in that transition period where it's like, am I spring? Am I really committed to being spring now? I don't know. I think I want to be 35 degrees again. So it's like allergies and that have just hit me for a loop, but I've been, oh, oh, I've had a bit of a cold this week. So I just sort of laid around. I trained all day and then I laid around at home and that was what I did. Yeah, it's it's a little bit past that for us. It's not. It's mm -hmm. no longer in the. Is it hot? Is it cold? We don't know. We're, we're gonna do both in mm -hmm. one day. Uh, it's now mostly warm. I think the coolest it, it gets is like the low sixties. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is absolutely pollen season. Oof. I left my window open one night and i woke up to my computer which is sits on the windowsill because i don't have an outlet by my bed so i use my computer as a phone charger um mm -hmm. and so it's you know it's like the long horde thing but uh my laptop was just covered in pollen because it was hitting Ugh. on the windowsill and i was just like Ugh. Ugh. okay i can't have my windows open anymore no, so i die yeah I'm Ugh. thankfully not allergic to pollen and stuff like oh. that. Oh, well, I'm allergic to dang yeah. everything. I always have been. Oh, like I take, I have to take an Allegra every day, and that sometimes isn't enough, and I have to take a Benadryl on top of it, and it works. But I am so drowsy. And when I was in college, because I'd walk everywhere across this beautiful forested campus mm -hmm. which is beautiful to look at but it's not great for sinuses in the spring and yeah. they were so bad like i would be on all of this medication and it would make me so drowsy and so bleary and then to keep pollen from getting to my eyes i'd walk everywhere with these sunglasses on even if like it was not bright enough outside to need sunglasses i'm like they think i'm on drugs or something They're like i hung over crazy yes every day <laughs> for like two weeks in the springtime so Ugh. let me ask you this have you ever worn a pair of sun g g g glasses that actually make it feel like there's like it's putting more dirt in your eyes or it, it like the wind will kick up and it it traps the dirt like in the space what? No. there because I, I i i mean obviously if you don't have something there blocking it the initial like gust of wind that has the dirt or the dust or something mm -hmm. will be like oh god oh no um but it, if like i have a pair of sunglasses i got at target they were dirt cheap um and i put them on and sometimes it feels like i'll get hit with that gust of wind and the wind will like curl around and the dust will get in there and then start like 
a, a, no. t- attacking me and i'm always there's, just like, oh god i can't there's something aerodynamically different about your head or about your glasses or are about you saying your... i'm weird no <laughs> like i think we are aerodynamically different kyle because that has <laughs> never happened to me my head is a funny shape who who knows <laughs> I don't but, know. Like, I I I haven't. I mean, because that's really the only pair of sunglasses that I have, and they're like a dirt cheap pair. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I wonder if it's me, or if it's the sun g- g- glasses, or if it's because they're like cheaply made, or who knows what, or if it's the style. Yeah, of, I just them. try a different uh fit of sunglass. I wear. Almost exclusively heart-shaped sunglasses, which I don't know would be a, a look you would want to consider. I mean, <laughs> m- maybe if I'm drunk enough. Uh, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> yeah, let me put them on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if masculine sunglasses come in very many shapes. I mean, Lady ones come I, in a lot of shapes. I, I remember the like two thousand <laughs> ones we got for the the. <laughs> of the century <laughs> i mean just, that that has to be like i i i feel like that's could go either way of being the best business in the world or a really really bad one because you make so much money for just one night of 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 just like hey we're we're gonna make these sun glasses where the the two zeros in the middle are yeah. the sun glasses and in fact they can do that for like nine straight years and They're and then up. they can kind of cheat it for 2010 if they just like scoot it over a little yeah. bit, you, you, you know. But like, I, I after after no one wears them the next day. They're just. They're absolutely gone. So you can make them as dirt cheap as you want, but you know people are going to buy them. Mm-hmm. So you can mark them up. Oh, yeah. And, and it, like, I feel like that's genius. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, products of days gone by. Kyle, lately I have been trying to hit a lot of thrift stores. I have yet to find any of those, but now I really want to. Do you guys not have thrift stores in St. Louis? No, 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 no. We have them. I'm just saying I have not run into any 2000s New Year's glasses oh, in any okay. of these stores. But now I'm going to ask. How do you not have thrift them? stores? Now I miss them. No, no. We're like an average city. We got all kinds. We, you know, I went to a city Goodwill full of this week. City that won't get rid of their own stuff. <laughs> we probably have an average amount compared to any other major metropolitan city. I'm going to be in a wedding next month, mm-hmm. and for the bachelorette party, my friend decided that she wants everyone to go to a thrift store and get a cheap used wedding dress of their own. Or some other kind of formal wear. As the like bridesmaid stuff is is that or, or no, no, no. just for, for the, the... Ba- for the bachelorette party only. All of us okay. are going to be wearing really tacky old thrifted wedding dresses, and this is what we're going to wear when we go out to our you know restaurants and bars and casinos and maybe a strip club. Who knows? Go for it. Yeah, we're going to be wearing those, and we're also going to be wearing fanny packs. <laughs> I'm real excited for this. I just ordered my custom fanny pack off of Etsy, uh, but I'm still looking for that cheap used formal wear. I don't know if I'll be able to find a wedding dress, funny. but maybe just a nice white dress. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So descri- describe this fanny pa- pa- pack that you bought. Oh, Is it a certain oh, color? Does it have your name on it? Does it have a picture on it? I found a shop on Etsy that was taking, oh, like, they've got all these images on fabric, and they cut them out, and they, like, collage them. They sew this collage onto mm-hmm. the fanny pack. And they had all these examples in their store. Like, it's dinosaurs and pizza. You know, dinosaurs it's... And pizza. Yes. Yeah, it's cats and donuts, stuff like that. And they're like, here's the list of stuff we have. You know, you pick your color, and you pick what you want on it, and then we'll send you a couple of prospective layouts, and you decide which one of those you want. So my fanny pack is going to be pink, and the items I selected from the list of available images were tropical cocktails, french fries, and Grimace. 
from McDonald's? Like the yeah, the... <laughs> that's funny. I'm very excited to see how this thing turns out. It's gonna be super nineties. It's great. Mm -hmm. Very that's... very excited. That's awesome. I don't think I've I I don't think even when fanny packs were in style, I don't think I ever. I, I I know I had some, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I I don't think I ever liked them. Like I don't remember being like these are a cool functional thing that I should wear. <laughs> it was just like these are the things that like my mom wears. <laughs> well, I I have been a spinster aunt since I was eight years old, so I know there must have been a time when I'm like, yes, look at this fanny pack. It I want to great. carry a purse. <laughs> I, whatever I wouldn't put in a like, purse I'm eight years old like I like them ironically I'm just like yes that is that is super 90s I love them I, I want to see more of them I don't think I would ever wear one <laughs> what if they put like I don't know what stuff you like like a Gundam on there or a smoothie <laughs> <laughs> You can put your smoothie in the cup holder on the side. Did you ever have the, those ones that had that had the like water bottle att att attachment I did not. on the I side? I saw some of those while I was on yeah. Etsy, but I did go for it. Yeah, I can have a little smoothie holder right there. I'm like I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> what if we had promotional like podcast fanny packs though? Yeah, we could do that if if. Uh, one of those stores like Teespring or the, yeah. whatever that because I, I, I still need to that one of the things about updating all of the website and mm -hmm. the social media stuff and all of our logos and stuff like that was like I need to finally actually make a store just like uh -huh. let's just I, I have the old logos I have the new logos we can do all of that stuff um, and just be like hey here's our shirts buy our shirts uh, I would buy a shirt. Yeah, that would be you sweet. Got at least one from me. It's the <laughs> thing I'm on, but like Kyle made it, so it's not entirely well, narcissistic. Yeah, I made the <laughs> logo. I didn't make the shirt, but still, I, like I would totally be like, let's make fanny packs. Like, have whatnots fanny packs. Yeah. Wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> mm -hmm. you can wear them to conventions. <laughs> just fill exactly. them with like buttons or stickers or whatever and hand them out to people yeah exactly have have my little smoothie holder to the there <laughs> it would be fantastic but that that, that is one of the things kyle, that i have been meaning kyle, to get to yes it would be fantastic kyle it, you it would be right fantastic there you go <laughs> i walked right past it that's for sure um yeah, I don't think I've been to a thrift store in a long time. I'm not much of a th thrifter. Me either, particularly because, like, I'm a big lady. I'm a weird size. I've And, like, plus-size clothing is getting so much better as time goes on, mm -hmm. which means if you go get stuff from a thrift store, it's old stuff that doesn't look great or fit great. Yeah. So I, I have not had luck in the past with clothes or anything, but I like thrift stores every once in a while for just weird odds and ends like i went into my local goodwill last weekend trying to mm -hmm. find you know one of these dresses and instead i bought three collectible shrek three glasses <laughs> i wow. think they were offered at burger <laughs> thing, maybe i don't know that but they're mine about now. right yeah that's funny and i went with my brother and he bought most of a build your own puppet kit build your own puppet does it is it just like an old sock no, it was like um like a Henson Company branded oh. product. Okay. He's like, yeah, I used to see these in like toy stores, and it was like a an expensive kit for the entire thing. But now like half of it is missing, and like all the adhesive has worn off like the parts you would stick to the puppet body, and it's like three dollars. And he's like, This is good enough. I'll take this home. There you go. Yeah. That works. You can buy some new galoo and <laughs> Make make your own imaginary friend. The Sam says that Sean found a giant promotional space j -j jam mug at Goodwill oh. a, f a few weeks ago, and it's like a soup 
mug. Oh my like a god, big, yes. Big thing. The best thing I have ever found at a thrift store was a belt buckle. You know, one of those like ornate metal belt buckles, mm-hmm. you know, that normally would have like a Texas longhorn or something like that yeah. on it. This had the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I think I didn't find it at a thrift store, but like I guess the thriftiest thing that I ever found was a giant menu from uh the restaurant Pot Belly. Oh yes. I, the you Pot told be- me Belly about sandwiches. This. I I yeah, I've 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 I believe I mentioned it before on, on here, but it was just like I was out walking around doing a school project and I happened to be like behind the shopping center in their loading dock taking p- 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 pictures. I wasn't doing anything sketchy. I promise mm-hmm. I was in high school, um, but I, it, like they must have like thrown out their sign in favor of a new one and updated them or something. Uh, but I saw it just sitting there, and I was like, "Hey, Dad, you should uh, you should come pick me up with the truck. Uh, I have something big." <laughs> <laughs> and, and and yeah, it was it was just like this gigantic menu that they would have like behind the counter, like hung up on on the wall, uh, and that helped to d- 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 decorate my room in my first college ap- 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 oh, apartment. That's- We've been over this. Fan- My love fantastic. repurposed like retail and food industry ephemera just inside a house. Yeah. <sighs> That's fantastic. the styling I need. I wish I could go to like restoration hardware and it's not like a vintage clock, but it is like an original poster for the Chalupa when the Chalupa was new. Yeah. You remember the old the, the Taco Bell commercials with the chihuahua everyone does, Kyle. Kyle. not yes. everyone younger oh, kids not remember won't. well, those, those well gen whatever they're on those gen xers now or those gen do, wires now don't whatever remember they are. carlos alas rocky is a cute little chihuahua Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> it was fantastic um so i finally fixed my computer Good. It had been giving me some issues the past couple of recordings here on the podcast, Mm -hmm. and I finally figured out what was wrong with it. It it happened to me once before, and it kind of fixed itself somehow, Mm -hmm. some way. I think. Um. By the way, Sam says to check your phone. Oh, Uh, just FYI. Um. But so I it 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 happened to me once before a few months ago. <laughs> oh, she sent me a picture of this mug she's talking about. Oh. <laughs> Hot dang. Um wow. So $2. I $2. I I we were sitting here recording and I I kept hitting this thing on GarageBand that was like discs the disk space is full. And uh, and it would stop the recording on Garage on Garage Band, uh, which is exactly why I do multiple recordings in case something like that goes wrong. Um, and I didn't know what it was, so I checked it out, and on my like storage space thing where it was like you have 32 gigabytes of music you have 60 gigabytes of this thing and you know 300 movies Mm -hmm. it it was like you have like over 700 gigabytes of system system (laughs) and i was was just like i i don't know what this is uh like i i and it's one of those things that I just a quick Google search was just like, oh, yeah, that's your computer. I was like, no, that shouldn't it shouldn't be taking up that much space. Why? Like, there's no way. And My computer shouldn't be this filled with its computer. Yeah. Where's like, the room for me? Yeah, there's no room for me. It's like you have <laughs> one terabyte of space and it takes up that entire terabyte almost. I'm just like, why? How? 
It's don't like buying it's... a house where the walls are so thick you have to scoot sideways through every room. Yeah, it's terrible. But yeah, so it, it was this thing of like, it's the computer, so you can't really do anything about that. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of left it. I cleared off my computer, and it seemed to fix things for a while, and then recently it started happening again. Ugh. And it was happening consistently, and it was giving us some trouble on the podcasts. Um, and thankfully, I did a little bit more research, and I figured out that it was, like, I I, I had a hunch. It was something to do with uh, us making the podcast also a video mm. format, because it never used to do that when it was only audio. And it was once they started to switch to video, then it was like, oh, hey, by the way, your system takes up all of your com- oh. computer. So I looked in, in, into it. I was like, is it something to do with Adobe Premiere or After Effects or something like that? And yes, that is exactly what it oh. was. Every t- time that I put all this stuff into Adobe Premiere, it makes, I, I guess, these like secondary files uh, that makes it so, so that if I were to, to use that asset again, it won't have to load it in. I think is mm-hmm. what I what, what I understood it understood it as. But sure. yeah, each each file was like two gigabytes, <sighs> and it was like a year and a half's worth of of these video p- p- podcasts, um, and and. Yeah, it was just like, oh, well, do I need these? And they're like, no, you can totally d- 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 delete them. And I was like, well, why don't these just delete automatically yeah. when the file is no longer in? Like, if I delete, because I, I, what I do is I have a t- a template set up in Adobe Premiere uh, for each of our podcasts that has the right intro and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and then I just import the correct like video file um do whatever minor editing i need and export that and then i save it so when Uh i open it back up for the next one i delete all of the old stuff and just you know do all that stuff and so like why doesn't it just delete the file Hmm. if i'm deleting it out of this thing and it doesn't so yeah i went through and deleted all of them and it it went from like 700 down to like you have 100 gigabytes of space and i was like yes that makes sense yeah that is more like it um wow. so yeah so i don't like many of the things that adobe does they are mm. stupid and yet <laughs> they are like the only they, they have a monopoly basically on all of the yeah, I don't know all of the who good the stuff. heck else can make a PDF editing program like them. There was a time in my life where I knew the entire Adobe Office suite inside and out, and I was the PDF master. And I had all these weird tips and tricks to like strip out all colors that made up black and make the black a hundred percent black and fix the margins and mm-hmm. do all kinds of wacky PDF wizardry. Yeah, there you go. I um, because it, it it used to be like you would just buy. Hey, this is Adobe Creative Suite ten, yeah. or you know six or whatever number they they were on. But then they moved to a subscription service, yeah. um, which I didn't like because it was like I just want to pay for the you know the ones that I have and have that as long as I can mm-hmm. to to get the most money out of it like i was totally fine being like you know two or three years behind on the Mm -hmm. creative suite and you 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 know just to make it worth it because it's expensive as hell um and the subscription thing i think is like 50 dollars a month but it's all of their programs so it was stuff that i didn't have before or didn't really need need um, which is then I was like, oh, well, now that I have After Effects, like, why don't I do all these animated intros for all of our podcasts and stuff like that? Um, and 
so like it's neat to have that stuff but it's still it's a weird thing because you have all of the programs available to download mm-hmm. but you still have to download them onto your computer i'm yeah wondering if within the next five to ten years they're all going to make that in the cloud and i mean because that's it's adobe creative cloud it might already kind of be on there but it Mm -hmm. doesn't run any faster or run any like smoother which is one of the ways that cloud computing can kind of work it can be operating on a a computer elsewhere and i'm streaming it to my computer which i know in the video game world that's a big discussion right now and the ultimate thing is just like well a lot of a America has really bad internet, and mm-hmm. that doesn't really work. Um, which, yes, Ham is mentioning. I think c- 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 cloud currently stands for storage um, space that Adobe gives you in the subscription. Mm-hmm. So it, it's I, I like I would love for my computer to run faster and be lighter, mm-hmm. and yeah. I don't mind if it like. I mean, I, I I guess for like precision stuff, maybe certain things you would need to download on your end. I'm not sure exactly how that would work, because um, you don't want your like if you're drawing something in Photoshop, you don't want your pen to really lag behind. You, yeah. you want it to be right there, um, which is the same thing for video games. You don't want that mm-hmm. input lag. If I hit the A button, I I, I want the thing that is. Sub- supposed to happen when i hit the a button to happen almost instant like as as instantly mm-hmm. as possible and yeah it's like a button jump okay yeah <laughs> there we go um but yeah who who knows who knows what will happen with that i i didn't do anything about my computer this week uh <laughs> It sat just, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it sure did. I paid some bills. That was about it. Yo, nifty stuff. I've spent this whole week getting pumped for Endgame. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about uh, the MCU fantasy draft yes. thing. Because you, okay. you texted me, I, was it yesterday or the day before? It was Thursday yeah, it was night. yesterday. Because yeah. I have, um, we're recording this on a Friday. And because it's Good Friday, my office gives us this like spring weekend and we get this day off. And I'm like, I don't, so like Thursday was like my Friday night, but I didn't have this to record. And I'm like, I don't know what this day is. I feel unstuck in time. I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, so I sat down and I spent some time working on my MCU fantasy draft. So how does this work? What okay. like are you are you making your own Avengers team? What what is happening? Uh um this was inspired by the James Bonding podcast, which is about James Bond, and they did a fantasy draft of Bonds, which are much more formulaic than a Marvel movie is. It's like, okay, we're all going to go around the table and everybody drafts a Bond actor. Um, they draft an M, a Q, a money penny, a villain, a henchman, a primary Bond girl, a secondary Bond girl, a gadget, a car, a song, all of that. Mm-hmm. And everybody like builds up their own movie. And I wanted to do the same thing for the is, MCU. Is is there some kind of like point system or something? Oh, no, so no. there's okay. a winner or something? Or is it, is it just like, no. what's your like... Who's who do you think your favorite bond is? The way this works is that everybody goes around and picks something and like it's off the table once somebody else has it because it started uh, okay. in sports. I've only heard people draft yeah, I, I, fantasy style drafting for completely non sports things. I, kn- I know but that's the game. <laughs> like I know the vague idea of fantasy yeah. football. But the, like the idea, yeah, is you build your own team, and depending on how good those players mm-hmm. do, you get points and stuff like that. Yeah. So you can have a league there. So that's why I was like, is there some kind of scoring system no, of like no, because the number not really of people can... Sean Connery killed is the number of the, the <laughs> number of women they had sex with is also a you know number of. Points or something. I don't know. You're just kind of take. You're trying to get stuff for you and make sure other people don't have it and like mm-hmm. build up your own team. So maybe like you're a big fan of Timothy Dalton, but you know everybody else is going to go for Daniel Craig, and you're like, well, 
if I take Craig off the board, then nobody else has Craig. It's about what's your end result? What do you wind up with? And you'll go in with your plan, but depending on what other people take, what's going to be left for you? How much do you have to improvise and fix this on the fly? Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so you, you, you've been working on an MCU one. Yes. Oh, which she is... has a gigantic notepad. It's a regular, <laughs> no, it's legal paper. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, an MCU movie is far less formulaic than a Bond movie. So to kind of compromise between all the different, well, I mean, there's like, well, sure. Yeah. There's like solo hero movies. There's big, we threw everybody in here. There's six hero movies. And so trying to meet some sort of median, some sort of average of MCU films, I came up with 15 categories we're going to draft. Let me ask you something before you start on that. Okay. Is this only including the actual MCU films or any and all Marvel movies? Even if it's a, like, direct-to-DVD or, like, home, you, you, you know, because the, the, there used to be, a, a, I was going to say, a Nick Fury m oh, movie. Oh, David Hasselhoff one. Yeah, like, it, like, is, is, oh. is, the, is the Hasselhoff on the table here for, I'm going to pick this Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm, I'm going to pick, because th that would be... Mm. That would allow for the similar, like, formulaic stuff that Bond has of, like, oh, there's multiple Bonds, yeah. there's multiple uh, people who did Money Penny, you, you mm. know, stuff like that. Like, there's multiple Nick Furies, there's multiple mm. Spider-Mans, there's I multiple... <sighs> That's also fun. I'm designing this for just me and my one friend to play. Like, okay. we're... We... I've talked about how we're making a whole day out of Endgame. Multiple we're starting the day. Huh? Multiple Spider-Man. <laughs> we're, st we're starting the day with brunch. And this is what we're going to do, like, to keep ourselves entertained over brunch. We're going to go back and forth and draft this. So because it's just the That's two awesome. of us, I didn't need to make the playing field that big. But if I did expand this, like, if I was playing this at a party or something and I had a bunch more people, yeah, we could make it that big. That does sound really fun. Where It's like, well, I kind of, you know, I want Iron Man to mentor Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man instead of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. That would be fantastic. I was building this just off of the MCU. Okay. The actual movies. Because I don't know, like, the... ABC and Netflix series that well. But part of this is that I divvied it up into you get to pick two major heroes and two minor heroes. Mm -hmm. And I decided that a major hero is anybody who has their name in anything. This is like the Avengers, their own you know. Solo movie. It's the Shwarma Six. Everybody has gotten their own name in the title. So like Ant Man, Wasp, Black Panther, Doctor Strange. You know, all of them. The uh, Captain Six. Marvel. Exactly. <laughs> the first thing I thought of. <laughs> like, well, we can't have all of the Guardians in there. So let's say, like, Star-Lord and Gamora are top-tier major heroes. Everybody else is at the minor hero level. Like, well, this wasn't a movie. But I think if I'm going by the rules of you had something named after you, Peggy Carter gets to be in the major heroes category. <laughs> so that's, like, the one nod to the TV se TV shows. Even if I haven't seen him, like, well, it's named for her. Like, that gets her into the upper echelon. What about Coulson? He doesn't really have a thing based off his name, but he has a show where he's the lead. I, I, I guess that gets into then, like, hey, he, we're incorporating the TV shows, but he's also in the movies. I Look, I, I picked, I had to make... If she wants to make Coulson a major hero, she can. I'm not going to fight her about it. If she's like, well, if you said I could take Peggy as a major hero, I'm taking Coulson too. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't. I didn't want to get super duper into the weeds about this before we'd even played it. But these are categories. You get two major top tier heroes, mm -hmm. two minor heroes, two friends, family, loved ones. You know, anybody who's an important plot figure but doesn't really have any tactical advantage to them. You get a primary villain and a secondary villain, which isn't to say it's like a villain and a henchman. It's like, you know, there's two sure. folds of villains. Like, you know, think about the first Guardians. You've got Ronin and then you've got Yondu who's on their trail. Yeah. 
You get two villains. You pick two locations from throughout the MCU. You pick one Infinity Stone to work with. One Stan Lee cameo to recreate or build upon <laughs> two songs that have been in any movie to date. And then one post credits teaser for a new character to the MCU to be introduced. Ooh. Interesting. Who would I do it? So if I'm going based off already existing MCU stories, I kind of want to see um, either what happened to Hawkeye and Black Widow in... Oh, God, what am I blanking on it? They mention it a couple t times. Like, oh, that, you know, like that one time in something, something. I, do, I My headphones cut out and I don't hear... It, I didn't hear anything you just said. So I, I it's... <laughs> it, it's I, I think in Avengers 1, they make reference to it. I'm pr pretty sure Captain Marvel also had a reference to the same location. I don't know if... I, I don't think it had a, 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 a anything to, to, to do with them. But there's a scene where Hawkeye and Black Widow oh, are fighting Budapest. side by side. Yeah, that's the one. Take Budapest. Budapest. Yeah, yeah, like, like I would are... want a... I, I kind of want to explore that film. You what absolutely happened could. with that? Like, the only lines I drew were, it's going to be just the MCU, just because I don't know, like, mm -hmm. any yeah. of the shows that well. Yeah. And I drew the line between major heroes and minor heroes, just so it's like, well, you, you can't have all of the Avengers on your team. Like, we can't, like, you have to kind of balance this a little bit. You have to bring in, like... Uh, a more minor hero like yeah. you can't have all the heavy hitters you have to have one of thor's buddies to kind so, of even it out a little bit let me ask you this is nick fury a minor character i counted him one? as a minor hero okay there's levels to this there's big major heroes minor heroes and then okay my friend did ask me about this and i'm like i think the dividing line is is what you do really special or legendary or impressive? I'm like, Happy Hogan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Tony's bodyguard. He's heroic. He's brave. He's skilled at what he does. You could find a dozen other Happy Hogans, though. So he doesn't get into that hero realm. Yeah, I would he's say he's more of a family loved one loved category. One. Yeah. yeah. So I drew some sort of lines like that. But otherwise, like, play jazz with it. Get weird with it. Okay. Interesting. The what one... would... Mm -hmm. go ahead no i was gonna ask like we, we're not gonna play this for real right now because i just uh, described this thing to you but what would you think if you could build your own custom if you had like the mcu dumped out in front of you like a big box of legos what would you build yeah that that'd be totally fun um yeah i i i want to explore that budapest thing because that's one of those things that it seems like they had some kind of connection made there. Like we've mm -hmm. we've we've known in the m m m m m movies that Hawkeye and Black Widow kind of have some kind of history together, mm -hmm. but it's never explored really. There's just certain details that 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 you see. Um, also, uh, from the comics, Hawkeye started as a villain. He started oh, yeah. as a bad guy. So that's why I was asking if Samuel L. J Jackson was a major or minor hero. Because as much as I want to explore that b -b 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 past thing, it's like, well, Hawkeye, Black Widow, not yet. She has her movie in the works. But, uh, and Samuel L. J Jackson, are, none of them are the major heroes. And the only other one you could do in that time period would be winter soldier but uh, he's also not a this, major you, you know it's, so it's like not have to play by real canon for this <laughs> i am just smashing a lot of things together i just told you like i drew like here's a major hero here's a minor hero here's just like a person those are your distinctions those are the only distinctions i yeah. drew play with time play with space you know, play with anybody else's rankings. I didn't do the same for I, villains. I'm taking a minor villain and making that my big bad for this draft I'm going to do. I also would have liked to see them explore more of uh, of Planet Hulk. Um, yeah. Which was in Thor Ragnarok Hulk 
being that gladiator like thing there's a whole comic book about that it's fan fantastic um and there's a character in there who i would love to see um God, and again, my my mind is just not here today. I am blanking on his name. Why am I blanking on his name? Horse faced Thor. Oh, Beta Google. Ray Bill. Go, Beta Ray Bill. God damn it! Why did? Yeah. Um, <laughs> today is not my day for remembering like, things. I'm like, I can't draft remember. Beta Ray Bill as your like post credits teaser yeah. of a new character. Wouldn't that be sweet? Yes. I would I, I totally See, want Beta Ray Bill. You're on your way to Bill. a great film. I'm not going to go through my draft right now, especially because it could change depending on what my friend picks. But next time we do one of these, I am I am going to run you through what my draft yes, ended up being. I, I, I'm excited. I absolutely want to get it. Hear that. So one more week until Endgame. <gasps> in, in in yeah, in a week's time, I'll have already seen the film. <laughs> Yes. I'm, I'm going Thursday afternoon at uh, it's either six or seven. I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. I have to, have to see. I think it's at six because I, I I had to like I don't know. I have to go straight there from work. If I get there in like if I go straight from work, I feel like there's still gonna be a long line mm-hmm. to get in and stuff like that. I already have my ticket, thankfully. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm so excited. We have planned out everything i stood in my closet for five minutes and i selected an outfit to wear to this movie (laughs) where we will sit in the dark for three hours like we have an itinerary okay like (laughs) we are going to brunch in the morning Mm -hmm. we're gonna sit there at brunch and we're gonna do this fantasy draft then we are going did i tell you about that department store that feels like it's from another dimension i think yes i think you've mentioned it a while back on the captain's log we're going there because we need something to fill the time before the movie. And we're like, oh, we could wander around there for like an you, hour. You took the whole day off, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're making a whole That's adventurous awesome. day of it. And there's a limited amount of actual Avengers themed activities. Like, well, let's go wander around that weird Von Mauer because it feels like another dimension and another time and a place you would go when you're dead. And so it's kind <laughs> of thematically appropriate. We're going to wander around Von Maurer. We're going to drive around, look at the houses and talk, which is what we always do. I've built us like an extensive playlist, custom playlist for the day. Awesome. I picked out an outfit and I texted my friend like, this is what I'm wearing. I think you would call this aesthetic sci-fi funeral. She's like, okay, I've got it. I'm going to wear something similar. We're going to coordinate. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna pick out a, I've got an outfit, a makeup look, a playlist, an itinerary, a dining plan. Like, this is the amount of effort people put into their weddings. Like, we're going to have these little adventures throughout the day, shopping, driving, talking, theorizing for the last time. Yes. We're maybe going to get a snack. Our movie's at 4 o'clock in the big ultra screen. I was just in that same theater, that same theater mm-hmm. room last week to see a uh, shazam like okay that's us we're gonna be right there there you go so we're gonna do this movie and then after the movie i think we're gonna go out to a late dinner uh, have a drink and just cry who knows <laughs> who knows what we're gonna do how we're gonna feel maybe we're like we cried too hard we can't go into the red robin just walk in completely Humming, they're like, "Oh yeah, the Avengers people are sitting in, 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 in the back. You you can join them." I tomorrow I am going to the store and I am buying a waterproof mascara because I know I'm gonna be a wreck. Yeah. Uh, did 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 you happen to see this thing on Twitter about this guy crying at the Star Wars uh, trailer? No, nope, there, there, there was I imagine that's real, of course. There, there, there was this guy that p- 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 posted a reaction v- video where he's just so excited and so happy about this yeah. new trailer that he is just crying and super excited, and it's amazing. It's so good, Aww. and of course, 
the internet is like, well, this is stupid. And I, I think there was one oh, woman in, in particular. Yeah, it was like, this is like so unmasculine and blah, blah, blah. And this is so stupid and all this stuff. And then the internet just took her to town. It was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, this guy what, is not hurting anyone. He's super passionate. That's that's fantastic. Let him be, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I don't remember... Uh, his YouTube channel right off the t- top of my head. I think his name was Eric Butts, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So they were using the hashtag I love butts, and it's amazing. Oh, and it's so, <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. That's the power of internet for good. Yes. More Yay. of that, p- please. I that was did, fantastic. I, we are going to this big old ultra screen. I guarantee you we're going to see that skywalker trailer that's oh, gonna yeah. look gorgeous up there oh boy that that'll be good we'll see that I, what what trailer what other trailers do you think we'll see <sighs> there last year i went to the movies a lot i think i told you like i got so excited like i'm gonna see that mission impossible fallout trailer again like I saw it like six times and I never got tired I'm, of that. Thing. I'm still so mad that I never went to see that yeah. movie in theaters I when we watched it for our. Of that. I need a re-release or maybe like someday in the future when I've got like bigger bucks and I don't know, a plenty of friends around in one yeah. physical space. We'll do that. Like ran out a movie theater for your birthday. I, I could definitely consider mission impossible fallout as a candidate for that. Um, but yeah, so I I always like tr- trying to speculate what uh, yeah. what trailers mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna see. I think I think we might see a new Spider Man trailer. Yep, those because are good. Because why bets. not? You know, um, I think we're gonna get something for Star Wars is an obvious choice. I'm maybe thinking Detective Pikachu, but that maybe. might be too air quotes childish. Because it, it's also, I don't think it's a gaming, I, you know. No, I it, it, we could see I'm one. I'm still could absolutely also... going to go see that. It's, yeah. I'm definitely the audience for both of those, but. Yes. Yeah. I could I don't see, know. like, um, the live action Aladdin, Toy Story 4 seems like a good companion to this. Toy Story, but that's the thing. I don't think they're all going to be, because. They That's often true. throw in a couple other. Oh, there could absolutely ones. be a John Wick three Parabellum. Oh yeah. There could be a. What are our other big blockbusters coming up? Gee Willikers! I just saw a bunch of these trailers before Hellboy. Uh, I did too. None of them were really memorable, except for there's Detective like at Pikachu. least one or two Dave Bautista action films. Oh, I'll throw him in the... there. Our buddy Drax. When does his uh st- st- Stuber? When does that movie Stuber! come out? I don't, know. I don't know, but uh that was, I, I, th- I think that, that one was, was before charming. Hellboy. Yeah. Um, I could see that. Ah, uh, I would say yeah. I would say oh maybe Spider Man Phoenix. Maybe heck I even a that. a New Mutants. I, well, we'll see if they ever put that. No, Maybe it's out. like on the calendar now for realsies. I forget when it's somewhere in like the August, September, October range. Like, I don't think it's like getting shelved again. I think they finally were like, OK, it's got a date now. OK, well, yeah, I mean, I, I would prefer to see a, a trailer for that over Dark Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Spider-Man, John Wick, one of the X-Men films. Mm-hmm a live action Disney thing and then like one or two more non Disney stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure oh, what that would be. Who knows? Who knows? Good stuff. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about two quick passings. I guess oh. quick is not a good way to put that, but uh, first one I, I have down here this past week, we lost two uh, manga creators uh the creator of lupin the third uh mm. kazuhiko kato aka monkey punch yeah um which is a fantastic name uh he passed away at 81 um i'm i'm i've super- 
surprisingly not seen very much Lupin the Third. It's absolutely right up my alley. Yeah. Uh, I've only ever seen Castle of Cagliostro. In fact, same episode three of the Whatnots review show is one that I did on Castle of Cagliostro. Um, that was right before you joined, so it was still just me by myself on yep. that one, um, which was an interesting t- t- time. But I, I, I feel like Lupin is one of those anime characters that, like, his influence is seen in everything, mm-hmm. or, or, or just like uh, Lupin the Third references. I, I remember. Um, the first, there's a rapper that I really like, Lupe Fiasco. Oh, the first, the first song I ever heard him on was a song with K- Kanye West, and Lupe mentioned Lupin the Third, and it, it it was, it was one of those weird things where I I maybe heard it once or twice before, but I never mm-hmm. really heard it in a popular song where yeah. a rapper mentioned anime. <laughs> and it was just like th- what th- this guy likes anime mm-hmm. who is he who is this lupe fiasco guy and then i ended up liking his his stuff a lot um but yeah just like i i feel like his inf- influence is in a lot of the anime today that yeah Sad to see creators like that go. The second one, there was another passing, um, was Kazo Koike, who is the creator of Lone Wolf and Cub. Mm. He was 82 when ah. he p- p- passed away. Uh, Lone Wolf and Cub is a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, I know you love that one. I love it. It is so good. Um, it is, it, it's... If if you're a fan of Akira Kurosawa's like filmmaking mm-hmm. skills, it's like that, but in a comic. It, it has that same styling, the same. It just it, yeah, like I, it's it's absolutely beautiful, and um the the I, writing and stuff that they did on on that book is fantastic. Uh, so I highly recommend going to ch- check it out. Um, I, I know at one point I said that I was eventually going to start like reposting the old episodes oh, yeah. of, uh, of, of the, 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 the old whatnots podcast. Cause we had mm-hmm. an episode on Lone Wolf and Cub, uh, but I still have yet to start reposting those. I think what I want to do is take a weekend to just like knock out 10 of them. And like mm-hmm. have them ready to go, and that way, I just like once a week or so, I can put put one out. Um, That'd be nice, something like that. Lone Wolf and Cub, go check it out. I think it's on Comicsology Unlimited, uh, mm-hmm. and I know Castle of Cagliostro. I think when I watched it was on Hulu, if I'm not mistaken, but that was a year ago. Yeah, do, um, do, who knows where it is it, now? It, it's strange because yeah, it was almost a year ago to the date. Like I, I made a little p- 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 That's right. post about it. I was like, wow, almost exactly a year ago, I watched my first like loop in thing because I was like, I have never seen this stuff before, and I want to check it out. Kyle, um, this tomorrow, as we found out, tomorrow is my one year anniversary of yes. joining you guys. Yeah. This is the anniversary of my first recording, which was our episode on the Infinity Gauntlet yes. graphic novel. Happy anniversary Thank to you. Melissa. It is ha- convenient. Happy birthday. Birth diversary? I don't know. Birth diversary. Yeah. <laughs> Pod day. Pod welcoming. Sure. Pod arrival. <laughs> yeah, it is it is 420, which at least makes it easy to remember. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing this a whole dang year. I've watched so much stuff. I have read more comics than I've read probably in the rest of my entire lifetime. And I've had so many in- times when I have to say to friends, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't watched it yet. Kyle hasn't picked it, so... I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's Kyle? What, what are you? What's this? Um, so, 
let's let's talk about that for a bit then how what's your experience been like you've been here for a full year now yeah it's been good it's been great to have this as like i don't know my lighthouse every week it's like well you know work is stressful etc however many other things might be bugging me i'm like well i get at least like two solid hours to just forget everything else and go talk to kyle about a cool movie or book or tv show or something like that and then we have this where we just sit around and talk and i can drag out weird stories and make you listen to them (laughs) yeah it's good it's fun i'm i'm very thankful that that you reached out and was like hey i i i want to help some 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 <laughs> I, have, I have an english degree and a <laughs> microphone is this news to you yeah yeah that that is is one of the things you're like my degree is in english and i can help <laughs> out with stuff like that yeah i wrote you like a whole little resume <laughs> and I think I, pro- in hindsight, I probably just could have said like, hi, I can do it. And you're like, okay, welcome <laughs> on board instead of like, here are my qualifications. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still, you can hear me on. I, I still want to be picky of, of, about who I let on and, and, and stuff like that. But, uh. Yeah, I mean, it was it was one of those things of like, oh, you're someone who I recognize from the community, so to speak, since very few people t- talk to us on stream. What's up, Sam? Uh, Hi, Sam. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's like, all right, so I know you at least l- have listened to the show, uh, and like you, you you have an understanding. Yeah, and then you you were like, yes, I I have an English degree, so I know how to like to dissect works and all that stuff and i was like yeah sweet that sounds good and you have a microphone you've already done this p- p- podcast stuff that sounds good to me i Let's also talk love about lost it. yes <laughs> did just I that tell alone you? will get you points <laughs> did i tell you that um one of my new co-workers knew in that she showed up in like September when I was still training her. Like we bonded really closely. This is the friend whose wedding I'm going to be in next month. I think you mentioned that. that and like two or three, lost fan. yeah, two or three weeks into knowing each other at work. I mentioned, I really liked lost. And she's like, I love lost. Nobody likes lost. <laughs> like this is the most lost thing possible. I am one of the few people that will other. die on the hill that is lost. That's my <laughs> one hill, my one death. <laughs> and I'm to take it back to end game. The experience I had with lost is that I liked the ending. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it got done everything I wanted to see it get done. Yeah. And I had a great time and I was satisfied and I'm still satisfied. And it became this like punchline to everybody else. And we're coming up on Endgame. We're coming up on the- hates it. He, yeah. He's, he's still Ugh. mad. He's still just like that fucking ending didn't make sense. Except he, he won't say, say that-, that, that <laughs> f word but he like he's he's just like it was so st- it was useless it was a waste of time i was like no it wasn't uh, dad if you just pay attention yeah, character <laughs> arc not dad. what the show was about dad <laughs> cares about the polar bears we so we're coming up on end game and then later this year there's going to be rise of skywalker and i'm uh-huh. like what if i'm in the same situation again where i'm like it worked for me i'm completely satisfied and other people are like Oh, what a rough ending. They missed this. This was never answered. What happened to that thing? And like, it has not gotten better in the 10 years since Lost has ended. I still run into this all the time where the people are like, you liked the ending? Really? And I still don't know what to do about it. Like, what if I'm setting myself up for this to happen again? I'm never scared about me not liking things. I always like things, but I don't know what to do when I like something somebody else is not satisfied with. And I'm like, I I don't know how to defend the fact that I'm content. Just say, you. hey, you do you, man. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll like the things that I like. You like things that, that you like. Um. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where Endgame goes. That's for sure. How it ends, all of that stuff, and and Star Wars too. Yeah, Star Wars. Be... I know less in Star Wars. I've got way fewer stakes in because for me, it's just like fun sci-fi adventure. Mm-hmm. It, space is pretty. Like I don't 
I respect what it is, but I don't have that attachment to it that the rest of culture seems to have. Avengers, though, I think... Oh, I didn't get really into Avengers until Avengers, which was, you know, a couple films into the series. Yeah. But I thought about it this week. I'm like, that was 2012. That movie came out in 2012. That's seven years ago. I'm 28 now. I've spent a quarter of my life being real into the MCU now. That's yep. huge. That's like yeah. the closest thing I've come to this is like Harry Potter. When the last Harry Potter book came out, this is that again. This is as close as I'm ever going to get again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who knows? They they, they might t t turn J John Wick into the next land before time where there's like 28 of them, you know? <laughs> and it's... It, my dog got killed again. I bought a new dog, and that one got killed. Oh no! <laughs> um, no, no. I, I like. I yeah. I I'm curious to see what's gonna be the next thing that ends up being like the next Star Wars level big, the next Avengers level big. It, it, Mission Impossible is almost there. Not I really. No, so. it's it's yeah. It's the closest thing if, we if have mission that impossible based on something else if mission Imp impossible decides to go the legacy route and start like training up a for lack of better t t t terms training up a newer g generation mm -hmm. or spinning it so that ethan hunt is now the like mission handler and and yeah. and, and stuff like that that could be in t t t interesting um because I, I would love for something like that for the Splinter Cell video games. Give me oh. more goddamn Splinter Cell video games. I fucking love them. Um, but the, the main character in that, that, he's getting old. That's an old dude. Uh, he It might be neat to just kind of reboot the series in the sense mm -hmm. that the main character of those gigi games, Sam Fisher... If he is the man in the chair, so to speak, he's the one that's talking to you on comms, teaching you how to do all of this stuff back in my day, you know, blah, 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 mm -hmm. um, which I, I think that could be neat. Um, but I yeah. think our next big, like, Pokemon. cultural phenomena like this might just be there's n it could just be more MCU because what I mean, we're yeah. seeing is not, it's a season finale, not a series finale. It's Absolutely. still going to continue on for years and years to come. So it's, Which we don't know really what they're doing they, with few exceptions. We don't really know what they're doing after end game. It's um, yeah, I did just watch a video about this. We've got homecoming, of mm -hmm. course, black Panther uh, two, Guardians 3, I think a Captain Marvel 2 was confirmed. And Most likely, yeah. There's the Black Widow movie and aren't we getting an Eternals movie? Yes. That sounds wild. Uh which is another one of those like wait, they're making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Who the fuck are the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. And like uh, I I don't even know who the Eternals are. No, cuz they were in um Infinity Gauntlet. They're the I mean, yeah. They're made out of star stuff. You know, there's time and space and the living yeah, they're, tribunal they're, they're like and all of them. Cosmic beings and 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 the, the, the like. But that's literally the only thing I've ever read them in. Mm -hmm. And it was like four or five pages of that. Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't just, know anything about them. They just show up them. as like an ineffectual courtroom because Thanos is yeah. too powerful. Yeah. Um. So... That's a weird one for me. I'm just like, I don't, like, why? What, you know, like, how is this going to factor in? And and then, yeah, there's the theories of, well, maybe there's going to be some kind of time jump. It looks like they're setting up a couple of the younger heroes, which I, I know we mentioned on, I think, our Reactor Core episode yeah. for Captain Marvel. Um, Just, yeah, there's... A number of younger characters that already exist in the MCU that grow up to be heroes. 
kids of people and stuff like that so mm-hmm. who yeah i mean but but that's the thing it's like if if they get rid of ca- more recognizable characters mm-hmm. like iron man k- 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 captain america is are these less recognizable characters really going to draw the same crowds i think they could because remember like this started with like their their big linchpin was Iron Man, who was not a recognizable character before. I mean, he was, but it's 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 one of those things like his comic books weren't selling very well. They still don't sell very well. Mm. It's it's a weird thing that like the for Marvel vs. DC, the Avengers was like the big thing. Like that was the oh mm-hmm. my goodness, these are a. a team of all of our super he- 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 heroes whereas dc has the J- justice league and is a similar thing but mm-hmm. each of the like main characters on their own are like these big power yeah. players whereas the avengers weren't necessarily mm-hmm. in their time when they were just like we'll get this guy named captain america i guess and this guy in the metal suit and we'll see if we can make something a- 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 out of mm-hmm. it but it's like no that was Batman. That was Superman. These are mm-hmm. star, you know, and they're making this super team. And so now the MCU has this super team team, but we haven't heard too much about legacy or what they're going to be doing after or stuff. like. So it's still this, like, I, I just, I don't know. And that know is the do. thing. Like we're spending all this time and it's fun, but, we have no clue. Like we have almost nothing to go on. Like yeah. we know these upcoming projects, but we have no idea how, what the solution is. We don't know how you get back Spider-Man and Black Panther and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and all these characters and what the sacrifice is to get them back. You know, is Iron Man going to, is Tony Stark going to be dead or is he just going to be did, retired out of commission like there's so much we don't an, have ai based off of him you know oh, i'd like that voice idea overs yeah yeah like we it could go anywhere and that's so exciting like i don't know i've got a lot of faith in end game and i've got a lot of faith in what they're going to do after end game i really think this is just how life goes yeah now so i like, I think to ex- explain my perspective a little bit more, it's more of the sense of, yeah, when they started these, they started from square one, mm-hmm. right? We now have 10 years worth of movies. It, I, they could have uh, like done a, not, not a better job. I, 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 I don't know exactly, but like it feels like after Endgame, that's the end of that saga right Mm -hmm. and they're basically going to be almost starting over from scratch with maybe some new characters and stuff like so i it's it's weird to me to be like well why start over that much when you could could have built up some more stuff over the past five years and just have that moving forward it seems like some of that stuff wasn't in there or not to the point where it felt like they were building it up for what's happening after. I mean, we're not so reaching... I could be completely wrong, so... It is... Oh, it's not like... I think there's plenty we have now that will still continue. Like, oh, there's plenty sure. of recognizable stuff, like we've got another Guardians, you mm-hmm. know, like there's certain characters like, you know, Hulk might stick around. You know, Doctor Strange might stick around. Like, we've got enough that's retiring and enough that'll like get us started and enough that is just starting up now. I think this is just like a transition period. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I have faith. And I think, yeah, to keep going this strongly for like the past decade, I don't think it'll ever reach a point where it's like, I see they got a new character, but like it's no Iron Man. That's no Thor. Like, they I mean, are that's, going to outdo themselves, I think. That's a problem they might have, though. I, mm-hmm. That's that's the thing, because uh, Chris Evans' contract is up. It doesn't really seem like Tony Stark is coming back really as Tony Stark, maybe here and there. We don't know exactly mm-hmm. yet. 
but it, it's it, it seems like they're preparing us to be like hey some of these characters won't be around and it'll be some mm-hmm. of the big recognizable ones so yeah if dr strange is still around that's gonna be neat but he like i i, I don't want to see him lead the avengers i don't want to see hulk lead the avengers i don't want to you know like th- th- those characters aren't of that caliber and marvel doesn't really have other characters that are not not very many characters that are of that caliber captain marvel very much could they just haven't hit that caliber yet because like there's only so many caliber slots and now they're getting emptied out and now somebody else is stepping up there it's not like they've been weak it's just like well, you weren't. You looked less shiny because you weren't in the limelight. Now you are. Now you're shinier. Yeah, I mean, they could absolutely do something like that with Winter Soldier. Yeah, because uh, there's precedent for him also being Captain America, so he mm-hmm. could take up the mantle for that. But who knows? You know, um, I, I, I think I, looking back and like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited and i'm n- 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 nervous and like i just i just i don't know what they're gonna do and, and it's it's amazing I am so impressed by the fact that we don't know what's going to happen and we've yeah. got some idea like we kind of know okay based on outside narrative stuff like we know these contracts are ending we know future announced projects we kind of know who's retiring slash dying etc and who's continuing on yeah but the actual narrative mechanisms to make that happen and what's happening to other characters outside of that like dr strange for instance i don't have they announced a dr strange too we can imagine very easily he's going to keep showing up but we don't have that concrete proof like we do with a spider-man or a black panther i don't remember if they have or not i felt like they did at one point but Maybe. I could be there wrong. is so much going on. Like oh, no. even me, as I'm a pretty big fan, I'm like, I, I don't remember. It'll show up when it shows up because this continues in perpetuity in until our, you know, our, our children are going off to college. They're going to have yeah. an Avengers poster in their room. Do you just like I did? Do you have end game theories based on because there's not uh, there, I don't think there's been a single spoiler leaked like it's just stuff like um, there were this apparently minor... spoilers that leaked this week. Oh, I, I have not. Heard I anything. haven't seen them. I've kind of t- tried to avoid things as much as possible. I I think the new trailer I I didn't even watch. If there was like a new like t- t- TV spot watched, or something, I watched the new teaser. It's really it's clip it's a little clip showy it's like remember all the times we've been through and there's all these little yeah. clips from past movies there's very little of stuff actually going forward i don't i mean like i i kind of have theories but i kind of do, like i i i don't want to actually formulate them into actual theories mm-hmm. just yeah. cuz i don't want to go in there with expectations i, I have I, I like theory. I they've One. won my trust so much that I'm just like all right whatever I get is whatever I get and yeah, it's gonna and, be fantastic and I'm never like a plot oh, elements yeah. theorist like this you know the JSX Machina comes from here and this is the solution uh, all, and all I know is that here. if if Steve gets to be with Peggy uh, somehow some way I'm gonna uh, lose my shit and cry Oh, everyone will. I'm going to dig out my, you know, I was talking earlier about getting as prepared for this as I am for a wedding. I am getting out my like grandmother's lace handkerchief because I know there is there was that weird scene in Ultron where he had a vision of him dancing with her. And if that's if that was Ultron again, if that was a vision of the future. (sighs) I'm going to cry. But yeah, so I I only do like character interaction theorization and my only theory is tony and pepper are like just going to get married like okay this is the end times basically we have no idea what's going on we're going off into this big heroic mission where we might die let's just elope now 
And they're looking around like, who can perform a wedding? And they're like, what about Wong? He's practically a wizard. I feel like he could marry us. Like, I just want Tony and Pepper to to suddenly (laughs) get married. It's just some other character as like the unpredictable officiant. Because we've been over this. This is my favorite trope. I love a wacky wedding more than anything else. And I feel like this movie could give it to me. Maybe I I just want to see like... Scott actually, or something actually, like, yeah, I'm actually I feel like that would priest. I feel like that would work really well, especially because in the Doctor Strange mo- movie, he basically gets introduced to Beyonce, and so him, <laughs> like him, like or, or, or her m- 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 music, but just like him be being so sheltered as this wizard, and then like ex- like finally exploring what's out in the world, being like, oh. I can be ordained on the internet. (laughs) He just like happens to be one. He's like, I can, I can do that. What if they're just like, well, let's just all go to the court. Like, I imagine Tony would be like, we'll just do it here at the house. And Pepper's like, no, Tony, we're going to do real paperwork for this. We're going to the actual courthouse. And maybe the judge is Stanley. Who knows? Who knows? That's, that's my one theory is like a sudden wedding. Yeah. Um, I say we wrap things up there. I'm I'm super excited about Endgame. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking about all of the Disney stuff, last week we had an entire episode all about Disney Plus here yes. on the Captain's So Log. much exciting stuff uh, coming to there. Lots of Marvel content, lots mm-hmm. of Star Wars content. A whole bunch of stuff. We t- t- talked about it for an hour and a half, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, so go check that out if if you have not already. Uh, last week on the review show, we covered Birdman, or mm-hmm. the Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Yes, uh, is the full title of that film. Excuse me. Um, go check out that one. That's an amazing film. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it and then ch- check out our episode on that. Uh, we also have a Patreon exclusive episode of the review show all about batman beyond uh we did that at the start of this week and we ha- are gonna have another one coming up uh, at the mm-hmm. start of this next month as well it is you're gonna have to remind me of the title of this thing it is shrek basically re- oh, reanimated it is, it is shrek retold this is what we're watching for our next patreon bonus episode this is a group of animators and other creators that got together and cut Shrek up into little pieces, and each of them remade it in their own style. It is entirely beginning to end all of Shrek, as you know it, just completely revamped, scene to scene, completely different styles. And it's all uploaded by the studio that created it right onto YouTube. Nice and easy for you. There you go. Uh, So that's what we will be doing on our patreon exclusive episode for next month uh mm-hmm. that, those are for patrons who are at the three dollar tier or higher uh so go check those out we would love your support next week on the review show uh we are covering an anime called terror in resonance mm-hmm. uh, which is directed by sinichiro watanabe who did cowboy bebop samurai Champloo, space dandy kids on the slope uh st- stuff like that uh i've seen it once before i really l- liked it i kind of miss sold the music in it, it when i p- <laughs> pitched it i was like yeah. it like uh, 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 well sure i was like it's not really about the music in this one because a lot of wantanabe stuff is very heavily influenced by a certain mm-hmm. style or genre of m- music this mm-hmm. one not so much but I was like, but still, it's c- 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 kind of got this electronic music vibe going on. And it really doesn't. <laughs> I don't know why that's a thing that I, like, remembered it being. Yeah. But it apparently is not that. So, oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Terror in Resonance. But you guys can go watch that on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, new episodes of this show, The Captain's Log, come out every Monday you guys would like to get them early you can support us on patreon.com slash the whatnots for a single dollar uh, and you can get access to those episodes early uh, as well as early episodes of the review show as mm-hmm. well too 
Uh, thewhatnots.com is our website if you want more info and all that good stuff. Melissa, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. Follow me for more endgame hype. That's all I'm up to. There you go. Uh, And I am at Yo Kyle Springer on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, And you can get updates for our show at The Whatnots on on Twitter. Uh, We'll let you know when we're going live and when we post new episodes and cool news stories and stuff like that. I I need to post more stuff that's not about like, hey, we have a new episode. Mm -hmm. But just like, hey, neat article here. Read this. Mm -hmm. New movie announcement thing. Go read that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Diversify the content so it's not just new episode, new episode, new episode, new Mm -hmm. episode. Uh, We have had a lot of new episodes come out lately. And we have a a couple more episodes of the reactor core coming down the road as well we did in a reactor core episode on Hellboy. i forgot to mm-hmm. mention that one um and sam is is saying buy a shirt we don't have shirts yet but yes buy a shirt in the theoretically, future theoretically buy a shirt in the future this is us telling future you to buy a shirt mm-hmm. so Go, 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 go do that on whatever the link will be. Who knows what that will be. Yeah. Um, that being said, this has been episode 48 of The Captain's Log. We will see you next week. Adios, guys. Bye. <laughs>